Hello everybody, Unfrequented World, back out in the field again, um, hitting my favorite metal detecting spot. I just wanted to show you guys where I detected last year, and because it's spring, the grass that hasn't grown in yet, you can see what a monumental task I have ahead of me here. You'll be able to see what I haven't covered in this field. So let's take a look. So last year when I was here, this green swath in front of us, that was what was mowed. And that took me, I don't know, three or four days to go over. And then I did it again when I got the Land Ranger Pro. But there was knee-high grass where you see these yellow patches here on the side. That was all knee-high, uh, unkept grass. And so the first outing this year we just covered along the ditch there, a couple strips. So I've got all of this to do, all over here on this side to do. And then behind the equipment, oh, there's another 30-yard uh, patch there 30 by uh, I don't know 100 yards and um, we did a little bit over here looking for the um, time capsule which is still there somewhere we will find it. I'm trying to remain systematic and do this uh, in an organized manner but that gets boring so we'll see I'll probably jump around a little bit today but I got lots of time I got a full day so let's get at it. Okay, so first hole, I was getting a signal um, saying five inches, and it was just a small little signal. And uh, this is what we got. Huge, heavy iron plate that was down there, probably 11 inches. Well, there's another find, second one. Now the interesting thing about this find is I just swept this whole area, I came across here, and I didn't get any signals. And I was getting a signal over there, and I put the uh, machine in pinpointer mode, in all metal, and I just started coming back, uh, searching for that deep signal over there, and it started getting less and less and less, and it took me right over here to this, which I had already swept over, and it was only two inches down. Um, not sure what's going on. Damn it! Lucky day! Oh, now we're talking. I feel like I struck out three times in the same hole. What is going on here? Four things in one hole? Could I be so unlucky? Yes, I could be so unlucky. A big W for waste of time. Uh, juice box. So just to show you guys, today we are on sensitivity 7 and we're rolling along perfect out here, picking up little tiny one inch pieces of wire. Um, it's, it's doing pretty good. I mean, it's not its fault that there isn't anything good to find here, so today uh, Bounty Hunter's doing alright. Ooh, I could use that. Glamorous? No. So I came down to the garbage cans to empty out my first uh, batch of crap. And uh, while I'm here by the tennis court, I found some change here before. I thought I'll try it. And of course, all we find is the top off of a can of tennis balls. Strike two at the tennis courts. Yep, that's what you get at the tennis courts. So I was here at this park last year and I noticed a strange phenomenon. And it's still occurring. Um, there's something here that eats children and just regurgitates the socks. I think when they film season two of Stranger Things, it's going to be out here in Chisholm and it's going to feature this playground. Chin up, there'll be better stuff next time. I don't know how much longer I can keep saying that. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. Well, there must have been a fence along here at some point because I found part of it. It's securely attached and it's buried in there, so... Juice box! Okay, this is the day that I'm having today. There is a pile of shit. I don't care what's under it, I'm not digging it. 
Alright guys, I am not giving up. I am staying here until I find something good. Ooh, shiny. Some kind of button maybe? It is going to happen. I am going to find a coin today. I just, this is like my worst day ever. I don't know what this one is guys, it's super strange. There's something round right here on the end of this chunk of, I don't know what it is. See it? You can see right there. There's something metal in there. No idea what that is. Finally! Finally I have a coin! <laughs> I've been here four hours! 1968 silver dime. Woo! It's a start! Not a 1968 dime. A falcon zipper. And within a few steps, I got a signal. And it's a coin. A penny. I covered this with the Bounty Hunter 1100 and with the Land Ranger Pro. I did tests, comparisons to see if if the new machine could find stuff the old one had missed. And uh, I've been over this a couple times. So there's a lesson guys. Don't matter. Keep going over your spots. You'll find more stuff. This one is also a 1968. Ah, mystery solved. I figured it out. Look what I just dug. That is a bullet. Very distinct shape. And look inside, it's got a round piece in the middle. Well, that's exactly what we found earlier. It was just so mangled, I couldn't tell what it was. Those are bullets. That's the actual uh, lead part from a fired bullet. I got two of them now. Woo! <laughs> wow, I got something cool here, guys. Uh, I got a signal here. I turned it over. I dug a hole, but look at that. I didn't dig that. <laughs> I did not dig that hole. I just turned this plug over. I don't know what that is. So there's what was giving me the signal. Big old washer. Now that's an old one. Golden nugget! Woo! Just gotta be two cents of recyclables there. So friggin' windy and cold out here that every time I bend over to dig a hole, my nose drips. If rust were gold, I would be a rich man today. Pull tab, vintage, also a 68. You guys can start bidding on that on eBay this afternoon. Well, there was another signal in the hole. And it's right here. Another coin. Let's clean that off. Canada, 1973 penny. Some kind of 1940s blister pack. Birth control pills, look at the size of that thing. They made everything heavy duty back in the day. Some kind of iron T-bar, I don't know. Feels like it's about 12 feet long. Bending my shovel. I can just stay right there. Don't know how much more of this I could take, guys. It's so windy. It's horrible. <laughs> Not a great video, I know. This could be the end, I don't know. I might try a couple more digs, but we're getting close to the end. It's cold. I just can't take it anymore. So I put the machine in all metal mode. I was uh, out here in the middle of my coin place and uh, I was getting lots of deep signals with it in all metal and I thought, eh, I'm just gonna try to dig one of these up. And look right there. It's a coin. Another dime, I believe. 1983 Canadian dime. I'm gonna play around with this all metal mode here for a little bit more, even though I'm frozen. That inspires me to keep going. Well, it was there, seven inches down. I wasn't getting any signal again on my disc four, put it on all metal, and I was getting a, a seven inch down signal. And there it was. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you guys what's going on here. In disc mode four, I get no signals. I put this in all metal. And it's 
it's beeping there's something there eight inches yeah see sure enough we were getting no signal and there's something there all metal mode what is that I have no idea but we're gonna try all metal mode again here's another one all metal mode no signal in disc 4 and uh, five inches down I can't believe the sensitivity of this machine on all metal there's another one and I mean I've been over this spot there's another one a piece of leather with a buckle on it um, we're on sensitivity 7 with the machine and I've been over this spot three four times I'm gonna crank the sensitivity up and we're gonna look for just coin signals and see what we can find in all metal mode all right so I walked around so we got a signal right at 9 inches and it was showing uh, 10 cents, 25 cents, bouncing all around. Dug the hole and look at it right here. It's a penny. Yo. Oh. Okay, we've got something in here too. Sensitivity 9. <laughs> oh, look at it. I'm on to something. Uh, a metal button. Probably pretty modern. Cool though. I feel like I just learned an invaluable lesson about my machine. Uh, all metal mode? Uh, I don't know. Every time I come out I'm learning something. Maybe it was a little early to jump the gun and buy a new machine, but uh, I did that this morning as well too. Um, am I getting rid of the Land Ranger Pro? Hell no. I just thought I'm gonna invest in the machine I wanted right from the beginning. Um, I didn't want to spend uh, a lot of money on a hobby that I didn't know that I was going to love and keep doing. So this morning, my birthday is coming up in a couple weeks, I decided I'm going to do it and I went ahead and bought the Garrett AT International Pro. So that's going to be here next week guys. We're going to uh, do some comparison testing between the Land Ranger Pro and the AT Pro. Um, look for that uh, and we're just going to have all kinds of fun. I'm going to keep and use and run two machines so uh that's it for this week guys so next week you we have lots of uh cool testing and uh playing around to look forward to so take care and we'll see you guys then